Step right up and get your barf bags, only 50 cents. My Harbor Freight mini lathe and mini mill came in very handy these last couple of days in machining and fabricating the little metal parts that are needed for the carnival ride toy. I've enjoyed this project because I had no real firm plan for it. I just kind of started uh, building stuff and so very free form. But there was one part of this that really required some thought and that was um, how to interface this uh, yoke uh, device here with the spindle. This is the spindle that would drive your turntable uh, for the gramophone here. And it's hard to see that but uh, here's a little sketch of what it looks like. Uh, the bottom part of this is tapered and I believe that that's where the turntable disc actually sits. It's, it's uh, got an interference fit right there so it locks onto that uh, conical shaped piece of the spindle. So we're really interfacing with this top half inch to seven sixteenths whatever it is right there uh, that the uh, is the, the peg that the record hole would go over. So what I did was um, I cut a little coupling out of brass here and it's got a set screw and this thing uh, goes over the top of this piece and uh, it has about a one or two thousandths inch over tolerance. It's just slightly bigger than the shaft there and it actually takes a fair amount of force to get it on there so I'd call it an interference fit. It's a very very tight fit and uh, with that um, I cut the aluminum piece so that it would go over the top of this uh, and then I have a set screw that goes through that and ties the aluminum to the brass. So this thing is made out of a couple of parts and I left this little stub here on the top so that I can add some sort of an adornment here which I'm planning to do. So that's something I'm thinking through right now. Not sure if there's a proper name for this brass part here. I call it a trunnion. I don't know if that's a good name for it. Uh, but it's attached to the yoke uh, by this screw. I've got a piece of 1024 here and I've through drilled this all the way through and it goes through the hole on the trunnion here. Now when I'm done I'll be cutting this down to where you can't see it. It'll disappear inside this hole right here. But uh, that allows a full pivot of the car here like this so that the car can go where it needs to go and there's a little bit of looseness there so that the car will always be uh, sitting straight down on the track. I worked out a design for attaching the drive arms uh, to the car. The car, I needed the car to sit flat and I needed it to be able to adjust itself depending on where the yoke ends up. The yoke's not perfectly true so it's going to move around a little bit. So what I arrived at is this sort of hinge design. There's a kind of a knuckle in there if you will that I cut out of aluminum this morning. I was busy on the lathe and then there's a nail that goes across there. So what I did is um, I just used Forstner bits to kind of hog out the wood there uh, like on this one here and then uh, with Dremel got this little slot in, and I made the, it so that the nail is nice and tight in there. So the aluminum knuckle goes uh, over the nail and that'll allow the car to pivot relative to the drive arm. Now another design feature that I wanted to, to kind of go over and a couple of people made comments on this is that the wheels on the cars uh, are angled and uh, that is so that when the cars are going around the wheels are more, more or less follow the line of the circle and they're not exactly right uh, but it's way better than if I had the wheels going straight and if I if I did that then the, then the wheels would always be in kind of a skidding motion as they went around. So this should help to reduce the amount of friction uh, that there is on the drive mechanism. So let's crank her up and see what we get. Uh, it takes about 20 to 25 cranks on this uh, to get it going and I think the cleaner I get the cars rolling, the fewer cranks it'll require to get it started. But we'll go ahead and juice it up to its max and see. So it's rolling pretty well. That's a lot faster than I'm going to want it to uh, operate. But let's let it run out, see what it does. I want off! I want off! Mommy, mommy, help me! We're going to put a 
throttle on this and we can adjust the speed here just a little bit. That thing's rolling pretty darn good. I, I must say I'm very pleased with this. I've got a lot more work to do. I'm going to be replacing the base of this. I'm going to use an old breadboard and I'll, I'm going to turn some legs for it to sit on. It'll be a nice looking piece of woodwork when I'm done. Uh, also, I'll be adding art to it. Uh, the, the cars need a lot of work. I'll be shaping those and painting them and I'm going to add drivers to it and some other things. So I think there's at least two more videos uh, to be done here. One is to finish what I'll call the carpentry part of this and the mechanical part of it and then the last part will be adding the artwork. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, we got at least two more to do on this project and uh, if you want to follow those uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you won't miss them. Uh, well this is Jimmy saying thanks for watching and uh, if you're ever in the neighborhood come on by I'll give you the nickel tour. Leftovers from La Borgata.